Hi guys, oh, we are back to CR today. Today we're going to discuss best competes kind of questions. Um, they were not very significant in the classic version, but then in GMAC focus, their significance has actually increased. Um, so then it does make sense to discuss them, even though they're not a very new uh, question type, right? They are essentially just a reformatting of our previous question types, that is strength in question or weaken question or explain the paradox or assumption or conclusion. So they are just a reformatting of that. So, you know, in one of the, for example, who completes uh, the passage question, we might have to find the st a strengthener. In another, we might have to find the weakness. That's all. So uh, once we read the last sentence, it's pretty clear what we are looking for. So then nothing really new over there. But then there is a certain point about the conclusion kind of uh, best complete questions in which uh, people are, you know, the learners are facing problems. And as I said, the importance of these questions is increasing in GMAT focus. I am seeing and I'm getting some feedback also that there are more of these kind of questions. So then, you know, we decided to let's do that. We should have a webinar on that. So uh, I am going to start with a strength in type of best completes question because it is one of the uh, most popular best completes question. And so, you know, a, a big majority of the questions, best completes uh, questions are going to be strength in type. And then we'll move on to the other types. Yeah. So let me share my screen with you. Let's discuss it. Um, so when the products of several competing suppliers are perceived by consumers to be essentially the same, classical economics predicts that price competition will reduce prices to the same minimal levels and all suppliers' profits to the same minimal levels. So when they are perceived by consumers, please do make note of perceived by consumers. Yeah, it is not saying that they are essentially the same. And these small, small words sometimes make a lot of difference. Yeah. So when people think that they are the same, then the price competition will reduce the prices and everyone will come down to that same minimal level and the profit will also be to the same minimal level. Therefore, if classical economics is true, so assuming that this happens, whatever is given in the first statement it happens, if classical economics is true, and given suppliers desire to make as much profit as possible, I told you like sometimes, you know, they'll have this small condition or small phrase in, in, in the last line. And we have to keep that in mind. Often it is going to be the guiding factor which will help us reach the correct conclusion. Yeah? So given that supply, the suppliers desire to make as much profit as possible, it should be expected that. Now, you know, Normally, if you think about it as an argument, if you're given an argument and let's say, you know, it's some kind of a CR question, what do you expect? It should be expected that what is this entire statement going to be when you fill in the blank? This is the author's opinion. He's he's based on the premises that he's given, you know, there is this therefore over here, right? And therefore, and blah, 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 it should be expected that, that A will happen, for example. It's a prediction, a hypothesis, an opinion, or whatever you want to call it. So essentially, what we'll have is a conclusion over here. Is that correct? Yeah. But please do realize that it is not going to be a conclusion in the usual sense where we say that I should be able to derive it from the premises. It is not one of our those kind of conclusion questions that we see normally in GMAT CR. It is not because um, here we are not being asked to derive the conclusion based on the argument, based on the premises. Uh, here we are completing the argument. So we are giving the conclusion of the author and the author would have concluded something that I, you know, inductive arguments, right? Inductive logic. We say that most of us here question are inductive logic. They're not deductive, right? So then the author, when the author gives the conclusion, you know, the author doesn't uh, ensure that whatever he is deriving is derivable from your premises, for example, isn't it? The author will sometimes give really random conclusions also. So here our job is, I mean, it's not going to be a random conclusion. Of course, it has to make sense because otherwise all of us could come up with different answers, right? But something that makes sense, but it may not be, we may not be able to derive it from the premises. Remember that this is also an inference kind of question, but not the usual where we are asked to conclude based on what is given. Here, we are have to give you, give the author's conclusion, something that makes most sense with what he gave before. Look, he's building up an argument, right? He's saying A is like this, B is like this, C is like this, therefore, then all those things should be relevant. It should build up to that. And then what he'll say, 
most likely should make sense. So, you know, most likely to be true, for example, but I cannot, I may not be able to derive it from what is given to me. Yeah. So look at the options. We'll get a better idea. If we do that. In a crowded market, widely differing prices will be charged for products that are essentially the same as each other. We have been given that, uh, the author has already given that, uh, you know, in a crowded market, uh, the products that are essentially the same, then, you know, they have similar pricing, minimal uh, levels, etc. right? So, of course, he would not be saying that it should be expected that widely different prices will be cha charged for products that are essentially the same. He's saying even when the consumers perceive the product to be the same, even then it is the main, same minimal level, right? So certainly this cannot be your answer. Look at B. As the market becomes less crowded as suppliers leave, the profits of the remaining suppliers will tend to decrease. Now, um, you know, we are talking about what happens when uh, the products are very similar, right? Now, is he going to talk about as the market becomes less crowded, what happens next as the suppliers leave? Then the profit of the remaining suppliers will tend to oh, decrease anyway. This is saying decrease, so that's anyway wrong, right? I mean, if the classical economics was correct, then if the market becomes less crowded, then the, the profits should increase for the others because the profits come down when there are more people in selling similar things, right? So anyway, this is incorrect as well. Straight off, we don't even have to worry about it, right? We can see. Each supplier in a crowded market will try to convince consumers that its product differs significantly from its competitors' products. Look, now this makes sense. Why? Because they're saying that when consumers perceive the products to be the same, then the prices come down to the same minimal levels and the profits come down too. Therefore, if classical economics is true and given suppliers desire to make as much profit, so we're saying that because the suppliers want to make as much profit as possible, then it should be expected. Then I have to, when I say then it should be expected that what will suppliers do then? They'll try to change the perception of the consumer. That is, they're trying to, um, you know, um, convince the consumers that our product is different. Isn't it? Isn't that the most obvious, uh, you, know, you know, sentence which is going to follow over here? Doesn't that really make sense? That when consumers perceive that the products are the same, then prices come down. And because uh, suppliers want maximum profit, so then they'll try to do what? They're going to try to convince the consumers that their products are different. Okay. So they'll be able to charge higher price. Right. So this makes sense then? C makes sense? Okay, look at D. When consumers are unable to distinguish the products in a crowded market, consumers will judge that the higher price products are of higher quality. Look at that. This does not work with, you know, and given suppliers desire to make as much profit, I mean, what is the point of making you think on this particular point? I'm saying so, therefore, if classical economics is true, and given that the suppliers want to make maximum profit, it should be expected that when consumers are unable to distinguish the products, then they will judge the higher price products to be of higher quality. It doesn't make sense. I'm telling you, keep in mind, suppliers want to make maximum profit. Then it has to follow with what do they do then? They try to convince the consumers that their product is different. Does that make sense? Right? So that is why D doesn't work with our entire um, entire argument with our last uh, sentence. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Also, D is lacking facts since price is at the same uh, minimal level. When consumers are able to distinguish the other consumers will judge that the higher price products are of high. Yes, um, that's that's true as well. Certainly, um, it is it is against the facts. I mean, maybe there'll be some slight differentiation, but even then, I agree it is against the facts. I agree with you on that. Certainly, yeah, makes sense. It is against the facts as well. Yeah. Uh, do you do you guys understand? This is against the facts, right? We are given that when consumers perceive that the products are all uh, same, then they are, then the price are going to come down to the same minimal levels. So then higher priced products, and we don't have a higher or lower priced product, right? Then we essentially have the same minimal level. Yeah. 
okay e suppliers in crowded markets will have more incentive to reduce prices and thus increase sales than to introduce innovations that would look now since we know that the suppliers desire to make as much profit as possible then does it make sense that suppliers will have more incentive to reduce prices and thus increase sales than to they not want to reduce prices right they want to increase their profit and thus increase uh, sales than to introduce innovations that would distinguish their product from their competitors' products. Look, the pretty much the entire argument, it um, you know, it it is it is uh, geared towards saying that either suppliers would want to differentiate their product, they would want to. What I am expecting over here is that the suppliers want to innovate. They want to differentiate their product because. If if their product is seen as the same as all the other products, then the profit comes down to a minimal level. But the suppliers want to make as much profit as possible. So I'm geared towards saying that they would want to distinguish. There is nothing that says that um, the suppliers will have more incentive to reduce prices than to introduce innovations. Right? This this comparison, there is nothing for me to say why this comparison may take place. Do we see that? It, it's way out of scope for us. Right? So, look, each supplier will try to convince consumers that its product differs significantly is not something that I can derive. Right? And anyway, it is something, it is something hypothetical, isn't it? That each supplier will try to do this. I don't know that. It's not a fact. It's not something that I can derive from the given facts either. Do you understand? But it is still... It is a conclusion, it is an inference question because this is how I am uh, you know, quite convinced that the author is going to complete his argument. It makes sense. It is the logical completion of this argument. The author has given uh, his own opinion. I cannot derive this from whatever premises have been given to me. So don't think of your inference question in best completes as only. It is possible, just like in our previous question where we said must not be true. It was, you know, a, a question could be must be true also. It could be a regular inference question also. But I'll have the words which are going to clarify that. But here it is an inference question, but it is not our inference, guys. It is the inference of the author and th that has an aspect of his opinion. So don't worry when you say that it's an inference question, but it has some additional information or it has a hypothesis or, you know, not a fact. It's all right. Does that make sense? So this is uh, one of the kind of questions that has been giving trouble to people. Yeah, do you understand? Do you understand why the answer is what it is? Uh, so D can be excluded. Um, is that clear now? Yeah, certainly. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was a continuation of a previous comment. Yeah. All right. Have a great week.